Cleveland Browns faithful, welcome back to the Cleveland Pulse YouTube channel. In this video, you will be seeing the unfiltered, unedited conversation between myself, Justin, and the first ever guest on the Cleveland Pulse, Derek from DF Sports. He was the first person that we had on the show other than just me and Justin talking to each other, and he's one of the longest standing relationships we've had at the Cleveland Pulse, and we could not be more excited to get with him and talk Browns football once again for the 2024 season. Hope you guys enjoy. I'm like very much thinking this game needs to be a win no matter what. Not just because like I think obviously it's a huge home opener for us, but I just look at them. I look at the Cowboys and I just keep seeing the only thing that I'm like, yeah, they might be better at us is quarterback because our quarterback hasn't played in however many days. I would agree with and that. That's my, and that's my like, and it's a toss up even then. Cause I'm like, if I get second half to Sean Watson, guess what? We're cooking. But if I get, let's just go down. The, let's, let's actually start with that. Let's just go down the position groups. So quarterback Derek, please jump in as well. Quarterback. <laughs> I would give Dallas the edge. Yeah. Oh yeah. Slice so even even if it's slightly, even if Deshaun's like good, it's I would still give them the edge slightly. And yeah. before all this, I would even say that they just have less like pressure to win this game. Yeah. They're they're on the road. They're in the NFC. They're not in the hardest division in football. It's like this is just the Browns like level of expectation at this point. Like you have to win games. Yeah. I think the, my thing is, like, you know Mike McCarthy's out next year, and this is just, like, one of those teams that, like Jeff said, NFCs, you're not really competing against anyone outside of the Eagles for the next, you know, two years. Jaden McDaniels, I mean, we'll see if how he turns out and everything, but Daniel Jones is – I can't believe he's still in this league and everything. They're the favorite to win that division. We're just clearly not. Yes. Yeah, We don't know ball. We don't know ball, apparently. But, no – Derek, I don't know how you feel about it, but like, I know I saw your thing with Chief Bush. Uh, I saw like the clip of you guys talking about the Deshaun stuff and just like what your expectations were for him. But my interesting thing that like I took away from that is like people really, really want the Deshaun Watson of you know his last season in Houston and everything. But realistically, like what we've seen with this team in general with the Browns, it's just that that's not like wholly needed, you know. All you really need from the quarterback at this point that I've seen going back to last season with PJ Walker and DTR is like, you just need a dude who can make plays like every now and then those two dudes could not make a play ever, you know, like maybe they made it once every game, but other than that, like you're just struggling to get to 200 yards passing and a touchdown, you know? So my big thing with Dallas is like, they've obviously got a great connection between him and CD But at the other end of the board, it's like I don't see much going on for Dallas that I do see with the Browns. And my point is Watson's got a huge, like, prove a game. I think it's not going to be the end of the world, though, if he comes out and he's a little bit rusty. Uh, So, okay. This is where I'm at with the whole Deshaun thing. I. go. (laughs) For me, it's not. It's nothing to do with play. I literally don't care if he comes out in the first, let's just say, six weeks and just puts up Pro Bowl-level numbers. I don't care. That doesn't make a difference to me. I don't care if he sucks either. What I care about first is that he's on the field. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's literally played 12 games here, yeah. which is absurd. In two seasons, he hasn't even played a full season worth of games. Obviously, suspension, what are you going to do? I mean, we really doesn't have any control as far as that thing goes. Um, you know, and even in his second season with the injury, not necessarily his fault, but for me, my biggest concern with Deshaun is when I see how his career has gone, I think, I think there's a quarterback out there that we can look at from the past, and I think they're starting to mirror each other pretty well, and it's not good. It's Cam Newton. I think Deshaun Watson and Cam Newton have a lot of similarities. I think they were both uh, quarterbacks who were unstoppable in their prime. 
mm. who uh, unfortunately starting to rack up injuries. Now, the difference between Deshaun and Cam is I think Cam's uh, rapid decline was because after his injury, he quite literally couldn't play the game anymore. Mm. With Deshaun, I, I think he still can, but from a Cleveland Browns standpoint, and, and this is what kind of upsets me with the whole restructure, we essentially gave him our vote of confidence with that restructure. Yeah. I would not do that at all. I think when you look at what you've gotten out of Deshaun, he hasn't had more than a 61.4 completion percentage. He hasn't had more uh, than over just over 1,100 yards and seven touchdowns, five, five picks around that mark. That's not good enough. Right. You don't but, think that's just you don't think that's just to like open up the money though, right? I mean, like what happens if he goes well, down and you're like I mean, I guess I guess, I'm not gonna get into that, but my thing is I feel like that money move wasn't really like a boat of confidence. My thing with Watson and like trying to just connect with you in terms of the like how the franchise has kind of given their boats of confidence is right now is like Watson's kind of right behind Stefanski and Barry after their extensions and I think that's more important to me because I think what we're like I think what we're about to boil this down to is that Watson's entering like a kind of like a almost prove it year like I think you want to see him play all 17 games I want to see like at least above average play at quarterback you know Jeff will get into what he wants to see but you know I think at this point it's really like like you said 12 games in two years and we still don't know. We still don't know. And everyone around the league, you know, uh, you look at almost every power ranking that someone does of quarterbacks and Watson's lucky to be in like the top 15, you know, and a lot of these, even maybe top 20 because of the injury and because of, you know, the lack of play in the last few years. So I, I, I'm very much like, I, I see the evaluate evaluation year as this year for him, but it's, it's interesting. It's, um, what has what is making me have concerns week one is that I was actually just doing this. I was putting together a little little short video, and I was going back the last four seasons since we've had Stefanski, since we hired him, to look at the first touchdown we've had offensively in the in the week one games for every season. So you got four touchdowns. Two of them were Chubb. Mm. One of them was Kareem on a pass, actually. And last year, uh, the first touchdown of the year was a Deshaun Watson rushing touchdown. Mm. So you're not. I feel like it's people are like, oh, you know, it's a broken record with Watson. Obviously that he's going to be in the spotlight. He's going to ask to have high expectations. You know, we could talk about that every week, which is true. But somehow I just feel like the stakes keep getting raised higher because this is exactly what you paid him for week one. Yeah. You're at home against a good team, and you, and he is the one you're looking to elevate. Right. I like Jerome Ford a lot. He's not Nick Chubb. He's not. It's very rare that he's going to carry us to a victory where it's like Jerome Ford, two, two, re, two rushing touchdowns and one receiving touchdown. He could do it, but that's not what you're looking for. The defense, spectacular, should be outstanding, was good last year. They, we saw they could win us games last year. So nobody's putting that off the table. But you bring back Amari Cooper. You invest in Jerry Judy. You've invested in Joku in the past. You gave up a pick for Elijah Moore. You need to have an offensive identity here that is like clear and cut better than Dallas to me. And I th feel like that's just such an uphill battle with him not seeing any real reps all preseason. So it's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, so, okay. I... What you just mentioned, what we brought in around Deshaun, that's my biggest. Not um, to mention the offensive line being messed up. I forgot about that. Yeah, but for, for me, I think over the last couple of years, since we've had Deshaun especially, I've been really, really, really emphasizing bringing in talent. And mm -hmm. I don't think any of us are going to sit here and say we have the best receiver room or the best weapons. But – I think there is a lot of potential with this group, and I don't want to bet on potential, but there's more than enough talent here. Yeah. I, For me, I think there are absolutely no excuses. None. Yeah. None whatsoever. Um, you know, we had the same conversation with Baker how many years back of look at what we've <laughs> surrounded him with. 
And, you know, a lot of us, including myself, were saying, hey, how much better can we really get? Now, in hindsight, right. maybe not the best or what we thought it was, but, right. um, you know, in that same sense, we're at that point now with Deshaun Watson where it's like, okay, how much better can we get realistically? Yeah. Obviously, not having Nick Chubb minimum first four games is going to be a huge, huge deal. Yeah, I don't trust our run game at all. I do think we have to incorporate it some. We got to find ways to do that. But it's going to be on Deshaun. The first part of the season is going to be on the back of Deshaun Watson. We don't have anybody to bail him out. And I, I agree with you. I think this game against Dallas is... It's more show than anything for me. Mm. I personally don't think the Cowboys are that great, and I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. But them not having Deron Bland is huge. I mean, there's no excuse why you wouldn't be able to pass the ball. Um, Micah Parsons is Micah Parsons. He's a freak. Obviously, Conklin's going to fill in at left tackle, which I'm intrigued to see how that all plays out. But I'm not. I can't do it anymore. I'm not doing the injury excuses. I'm not doing the he hasn't played excuses. Um, and again, that's not necessarily his fault. But, you guys, this team is in a spot where we have re-signed a lot of our core players. Um, we've been fortunate enough to land some pretty good draft picks without having our first rounders since the Deshaun trade. Very true. We have to make the most out of what we have. And you cannot afford, and we said it with Baker, it's the same thing with Deshaun. You cannot afford to waste uh, great rosters and great management when it comes to the guys around yep. you. You can't do that. Yep. So it's got to get figured out. Something's got to break. Good point about the talent. My thing with all that and talking about additions and subtractions from this team in general, I think the one thing that I want to see – Especially, I and it all is related to the offense, but, you know, the identity of the offense for the last few years and with Stefanski in general has been run heavy and, you know, very accurate passing games lead you to wins, you know. And so, for me, we get Ken Dorsey, who in Buffalo is kind of like a wheeler and dealer, you know, letting the ball fly, even letting, you know, Allen kind of be a little bit looser with it and, then you also have the departure of Bill Callahan, which, again, unspeakable in terms of the offensive line work that he's done in the past. And now you have injuries. You have a little bit of a, you know, twist going on with some of these guys. And, you know, like you guys were talking about, there's a lot of talent here. But at the same time, how is the identity in year five of Kevin Stefanski going to really change with, you know, a Ken Dorsey coming in, a second year of Jim Schwartz? I mean, you'd hope that you only get better with Jim Schwartz. But um, I'm very interested to see, like, hey, because there's no Nick Chubb, because Jerome Ford, you know, is a little bit I, – I like him too. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of him as a backup. I don't think he'll ever be the number one guy. He could be a 1B maybe on another team, but I think he's a great second-string guy like a Kareem. And, but outside of that, like you were saying, Derek, I mean, you got Amari Cooper. You have Jerry Judy. You're hoping that Elijah Moore not being the number two guy, maybe he has a little bit of a resurgence in that third wide receiver spot. Cedric Tillman, maybe he makes a little bit of a splash here and there. David Njoku, like Jeff said, invested a lot of money into him, like you guys both said. Um, there's a lot of talent on this team. And I've kind of been like a little irate with how the national media covers us because I don't know if like they literally like – just continue to see, hey, Browns are Browns. But at the same time, we went to the playoffs last year after our starting quarterback went out after five games or four games. And so for me, it's to the point now where if you don't think this is a Super Bowl team, I don't know what we're talking about. And I don't know what real expectations are at this point with this team. And honestly, so here's the thing. Here's, here's what I like about what you said there. What does the Stefanski identity look like offensively? I feel like the, if you, if you have a complaint about Stefanski, it's that you are upset that you haven't kind of seen the offense get to that top flight level 
of <laughs> this is getting good. Let, hold on, hold on. Let me think. Uh, let me think. Let me oh think. My goodness. But where's the training wheels? Can we take the training wheels off? Like, here's yeah. my thing. For the first couple, for for all right. So you've established yourself as, as a franchise that can win. You've been to playoff games. You could win all these games in the regular season by you know with the Kevin Stefanski base offense. We've already seen that. He's won coach of the year two times, but think back, uh, you know, this most recent season, did, did Houston beat us because, you know, they were, they were pounding the run and they were, you know, they had an elite running game. No, we threw two pick sixes didn't help, but, but CJ Stroud is an issue. You have to contend with that. Like it's 2024. I'm here for a balanced approach. I'm here for even football in the AFC, but Nine times out of ten, maybe I shouldn't even say nine times out of ten. Maybe it's less, but when you're talking about the best teams in the playoffs, it's like who are you game planning for on their offense on their offense? Okay, the quarterback, cool. You have rare exceptions. CMC, Nick Chubb. When if we're in the playoffs, that's that's something that I think can be seen. But it's like, all right, we weren't. Oh, you know, hopefully Houston's running game doesn't destroy us in this playoff game. Like, no, you have to have the best quarterback in the game to probably win a playoff game. We see even even if you're the even if you're one of the best in the league. If you're not the best in the game, if you're a Josh Allen against the Mahomes, if you're a Lamar Jackson against a Mahomes or somebody else, it doesn't really matter. We know that that's the pinnacle. We know that that's how you get to the big dance. And then you could have people contribute and you could almost reset and play a different game when it's when it's, you know, when it's just a Super Bowl. And obviously you're going to have to have contributors from all aspects in a playoff run but it's got to start with the quarterback for me yeah well going back to Derek's point about just the Cowboys in general and my expectations for this game is just that I don't think that they're a bad team and I think that they'll make the playoffs in the NFC not that that's saying much but at the same time I think this we were going through the roster and everything in the depth charts and again I looked at it I think maybe linebacker is the only position outright that they beat us in and of course we talked about quarterback and if Deshaun plays like we know he can different story but for me I just think this is a team you have to beat week one if you're not and like I was telling you guys before I think we started recording it's like I'm I'll be a little bit irate with a couple people at my gym if we lose this game and like Dak has some sort of like you got Cowboys game. fans at your gym? No, but like they're like oh, they're like they're, they're like they're Dallas. Haters. They're like Dallas is a, like a serious team. I'm like mm. I don't know that you really know what's happening, here, buddy. But that's <laughs> just enough. me. Fair enough. So what what worries me about the Cowboys game is I and it doesn't necessarily worry me because I'm beyond confident with us in this area. But I think it's going to be a defensive game. Which kind of sucks. I Me wish too. it wasn't. I would love to see us just come out and sling it. But um, I think given Dallas's issues, right, they have, in my opinion, little to no run game at all. I love Zeke. He's one of my favorite Buckeyes of all time. But hey, man, I don't. When's the last time? When's the last time either of you have seen the uh, Sugar Bowl from the playoff run when we won the oh. national title? Uh, they rerun. They rerun those things towards the playoffs for in the Big Ten um, TV selection, but not recently. Not okay. recently. So at work, our Direct TV got just shot. Went down, oh. and uh, <laughs> you're so, just playing Buckeye highlights. <laughs> well, right. So yeah, my boss brought in her <laughs> PS5 and was like, "Here, we can use this." So I'm rewatching all the old games. I had games queued up that you know I wanted to watch. It was funny. I actually turned on the uh, Baker plant the flag game just oh. to see how many people would notice. I was I was at that game. Were yeah. you? Yeah, so I was at Jeez. that game. That's crazy. But damn, my... Jeff, I didn't know that, and that explains a lot. I was at that <laughs> game. I was at that game in college. I was at that game. Damn. Jeez, that's oh. crazy. But yeah, I'm shocked you didn't know that. But yeah, you, you did, didn't know that. Damn. Go but ahead. my my biggest takeaway. So we had on the Sugar Bowl, and then we had on the national championship. And I'm sitting there watching the TV, and I'm like, "Why? What looks weird?" And then I, it clicked. This man Zeke is fat as hell now. Yeah. I mean, he was thin. He looked good. He was quick and elusive. Hey, Derek, you wanna you wanna talk about you know getting fat and being off of weed and something? That dude got fat off of weed. <laughs> that dude, he went to Dallas. What was it? Was it second year? Allegedly, yeah. allegedly, allegedly, the accusations are flying. No, he got he got suspended for six games. And oh, did he? Did he? For for weed. I thought it was oh, I don't know it was for weed. 
I'm pretty sure I'm looking it up now, but that dude, <laughs> I know for a fact, and this is not that's really- like the life of your average NFL running back, though. Like he's yeah. literally an like an MVP talent for a handful of seasons, and then it's like, uh, you know, uh, but 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 what? I don't know. They've, They've missed- got two guys on that team. Yeah, they miss they there. mismanaged that whole situation. But what else were they going to do? I mean, they paid Zeke, and then Pollard uh, obviously wasn't a one A, and now they're back to square one. So, I mean, that's a good point. I even think maybe our, our run game might be even a little bit better than theirs this this Sunday. Which is crazy because, I mean, I like Dante Foreman. I think he was a good pickup. But I'll tell you, I'll be honest, I'm not that big of a fan of Jerome Ford. I had really high expectations with him because I liked uh, kind of the clay that you had to work with. I mm-hmm. think he's a very talented back. Um, I like his speed. I like his hands. But, man, I, I haven't seen a running back with this bad a vision since Trent Richardson. I mean, I the Damn. games that I have That's been bad. to, you'll see, like, a wide-open cutback lane open up, and he just runs straight into the pile. And I'm like, what are we doing? He could have. We'll see if we'll see what. Well, that's the best part about week one is who who had good off seasons, there who progressed, and who and who stood the same. And who you know who stood the same. But here, hold on, Derek. I have I actually have an interesting question for you because I think you're going to okay. have a, I think you have an interesting response. How much? And then I like to hear from Justin too. How much do you think the new kickoff rule is going to play into effect this year? Okay, actually, yeah, this is something that I've been thinking about as well. I like think... is the fancy a huge elevator for us in this because he's just like an analytic guy. Like, hey, we're gonna do this, and if it, if the ball is kicked here, we're gonna do this. He's just gonna have all these strategies. We just have to execute, or is it not that serious? So I was thinking on the flip side. I don't think the Browns are really going to do a whole lot because I don't even know who we're going to have returning kicks. I mean, it's probably going to be Elijah Moore. I would like to see uh, Thrash do it. Speaking of Ford, he's a good option there. But more so on the flip side, I think... They've got Pierre Strong listed as the kick returner and Elijah Moore as the punt returner. And Jerome Ford is the backup back kick returner as well. Okay, well... Good, good call, Derek. Yeah, but I I don't think it's going to help us, if anything. It should be Naheem Hines, really, but yeah. he's hurt. Yep. I think I think more than anything, I'm going to be throwing Dude, something through my TV when, how when many, we have a kick return on us. Well, how many how many times do we get a kick returner, like, specifically in the offseason? And then they're hurt. And they get – Every year. They're, they're, hurt, they're hurt before the year starts. Or in the first game, they get a season-ending injury. Except, except for Stefanski's freshman year as our coach every year. Because remember, we got Shaquem Grant for Stefanski's second year. He got hurt. Uh-huh. And then he got hurt again at the beginning the of, of last of last year. This year we have Hines. He's hurt. And the first, the only person who – which I was fine with. I obviously don't want to see anyone get hurt. But the only person who never got hurt in that role – Unless I'm missing somebody, some DPJ. or someone, yeah, DPJ. they had DPJ doing it in 2020. Everyone hated, everyone hated just, DPJ. Dude, doing I never that. understood that dude. It seemed all right. At least he didn't seem like a slug running routes. I'm not saying right. he was like quick, but dude would catch the ball flat footed, and I'd be like, oh my god, he's not going yeah. anywhere. Is he picked up by anyone? I think he had a punt return for a touchdown too, but he was still so sl- I felt like he was so slow. He was playing for Detroit last year. Remember we traded him? I thought he, I thought I saw him get waved though. He did. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. He did he wave back? Did he wave back? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But so, I do think so. I, just I, raging at the TV when our special when Bubba dude, Ventrone just gives one up. I'm <laughs> telling you, bro. I Allegedly. I'm already prepared. Like I'm prepared <laughs> for. Sorry, but for some bullshit to happen oh, yeah. on this stupid new rule, because this kind of stuff always happens to us. It's always the dumbest things imaginable that make no sense um i saw and i i can't remember i think this was in, it, this was a madden clip so take that for what it's worth uh but somebody like on the new kickoff rule like ran a rever- like a uh, oh, fake yeah. reverse into a real reverse or something crazy and i'm like i was watching that and the whole time i'm thinking that's crazy and then i thought yeah, if that's gonna happen to anybody, it's gonna happen to us. Like, you know what, what? You know what might be good for us though. Don't you have to? Don't you have to elect to do an onside kick this year? Yeah, but what's that mean? Well, we've been trolled like by onside to, kicks before. I mean, yeah, like you have to declare for it. Like the team. I think you. I think everybody. It has to be aware you're actually kicking them. Mm, I believe. 
there was that clip of the was it like of Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill and they're like yes. this is yeah. on this is unstoppable if they ever pull mm-hmm. this off. Yep. Yeah. Oh gosh. It's, it's it's a bunch of BS, but that's I don't know. The for us, kicking has just never been like it's just been one of those things where I'm like, just secure the ball. Just don't fumble it. Just don't muff it. If it's gonna go in the back of the end zone, let it go in the back of the end zone. Don't try to like fuck around and catch it at the one and whatever. Because I feel like DPJ did that one year. I feel like he legitimately tried to grab the ball at like the two yard line, and people are just like, "Why is this guy still back here?" Justin, as a former lineman, yes, sir. Talk to me about this offensive line situation this week. Wills, I mean, is, Wills is out. Conklin's going to be playing left. Yeah. Dewan playing right. Yeah. What is our against Micah Parsons week one? How is this a startling one out of ten? How startling? I mean, I'm glad that Wills is the one who's out. Of so three it's of actually those. an upgrade. Could be an yeah, upgrade. Yeah. Again, I'm I'm very much in the department. That's an upgrade. That that's a good thing. Conklin, you never know of him. He's getting older. The dude gets hurt every single year. Yep. Um, so That's what you're I'm hoping about. you're hoping that Micah is like, hmm, maybe I'll take my chances on the second year guy, the guy who hasn't been an all pro or to a pro bowl or whatever. But it, I don't know. It's kind of the same situation where you're like, if you're Miles Garrett, you're expecting him to at least get to the quarterback once, maybe once and a half or twice in the game. So I think Micah is one of those game breakers. Um, it just you manage it, you run the ball away from him, you run counters, you run, you know, basically boots and everything away from him and just try to avoid him as much as possible. Because, again, I, when I look at the rest of this, I mean, they've got a couple of dudes, but no one who, like, jumps out to me like a Micah, you know, where we have Miles, Denzel, JOK. I just don't think they got it like that. So, and I mean, the rest of the O line, I mean, we we know the guards, they've been doing it forever. And right. Ochich, he's great. So, I think everything else is fine. I feel like every year it's always the tackles until we get to injuries. But, yeah. So, I'm confident with DeWand. I'm confident with DeWand on, um, I almost said Dexter Lawrence. What's his name? Demarcus <laughs> Lawrence. A couple, couple decades late. Yeah. Um, I, I think I, I'm confident with DeWand. I mean, anytime you got a, a tackle who can manhandle TJ Watt, not really worried about anybody on him. <laughs> um, but with Conklin moving over to left, I'm intrigued. That's one of the – similar to Deshaun, that's one of the pieces where I'm like, I really don't know. Like, I don't know how it's going to go. I know Jack has played left tackle in the past, but, um, you know, we had this conversation when the Browns drafted Jedrick Wills. That muscle memory of switching from right to left is not a smooth transition. And when Jack has been playing right tackle in the NFL for year after year after year – right. Um, it's not as simple as, all right, we're going to put you on the other side, but I do think it, there's a lot of emphasis on Stefanski and on Ken Dorsey to, uh, to find ways to, to manage that problem. I mean, we can't treat that the same way the Bengals treat Miles Garrett when we play Mm -hmm. them. You can't just have one-on-one. We're going to have to have, uh, Najoku check and release. We're going to have to have probably Foreman. Uh, in the backfield, trying to get another just block in there um, on Parsons. You're not going to stop him completely. Nobody's asking for that. But in terms of keeping Deshaun upright or giving him enough time, I think the game plan has to has to revolve around 11. And luckily, the offensive line, which you mentioned, um, you know, from right guard over, Pretty experienced veteran guys, Joel Batonio, Ethan Posick, uh, and Wyatt Teller. Those yep. guys are going to be able to handle their own. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, Batonio in the past has kind of helped Jed out a little bit when it comes to some mistakes. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't want to say he's going to do the same for Conklin, but I think in terms of that veteran presence on that offensive line, I think they both understand, like, okay, whatever the problem is, we can figure it out. We can – Double team shift, whatever. I'm not. I don't know. I have a better feeling about the offensive line than I do Deshaun Watson. We can. Yeah. I'll just put it like that. Fair enough. And actually, looking at Conklin's um, pro football reference, 
I'm I'm sure he, ha- he did play left tackle at some points, but they just listed him. They've always listed him as a right tackle. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's only played 22 games the last three seasons. Um, yeah. Seven in 2021, 14 in 2022, and obviously one last year. So health, it's just you're kind of already walking the tightrope there with a position group that you really want to be the healthiest throughout the year with yeah. Wills being down, even though I don't, I don't think he's a, an elite talent. But it's still a body nonetheless. And yeah, I mean, I know we got some other options there, but are they going to be as serviceable or as of you know of a plus player as our as the guys that we're putting out there Sunday? I I don't think so, of course, but it'll be interesting to watch. It'll be interesting to see who Mike Parsons, you know, targets and what they want to do with him as far as him, you know, getting to the football and getting to the quarterback. But yeah, I mean, Derek, I think that's probably I do feel more confident in them than I do in Watson, at least like a baseline level. Yeah, like yeah. I think Watson could elevate us over the top. The offensive line, could they? Yeah, but I just think as far as like your average play, the offensive line, they should be all right. It's going to be a test. We'll see. And hopefully, like I said, it's everybody. There's no injuries, but we'll see what happens. Do we want to do predictions? Kind of wrapping up here. Do we want to talk? Do we want to do game scores? Win, loss? I already, I already have uh, – mine's already out, 24-20. Mm. Browns, so I'll That's... I'll kick it off there. Curious to hear me and Justin have predicted every Browns game for the last four years, and it's been amazing. So I'm curious to hear what everyone has to say. There, well, I'll let you go second. It, it's crazy that you said that score because that is literally the score that I also came up with. Yes, was 24-20. Yes. Um, I'll be honest with you, I I don't know for this game. Um, I think the Browns should win, but this is, I'll give you what I'm expecting. If I had to put a lump, large sum of money on this game and how it's going to go, I think it's going to be a defensive game. I think it's going to be sloppy on both sides early on. I think that we're going to leave the game saying, mm, Deshaun didn't look great, but he did enough. The defense, I think we're going to be very happy with. Um, and then I think on the flip side for Dallas, I think they're going to realize how terrible their run game is Hmm. and how big not having, uh, their secondary fully healthy is going to be. So that's what I think. I, I, if you're a betting man, stay away from this one (laughs) because I really don't No, Nobody knows. Like that's the thing. Nobody really knows. And I feel like you guys are both going pretty conservative. I'm just thinking back to the game that we had against them with, you know, the wonder trio of Baker and Odell and Jarvis and how that ended up being like a 40 plus point game, 40, what was it? 45 to 38 or something like 40, that. 48, 39. That's wild. But I'm, I'm very much expecting, and I'm going to put like an emphasis on, Just like in the Baltimore game, he doesn't start out too hot. But Deshaun, like Jeff has said, I think we'll. I think we'll. I think we'll be winning going into halftime. I think we'll come out of halftime. Hopefully, we get the ball. Um, But I think we come out of halftime and they just pop the lid off of that passing game. And you see Judy and I feel like I feel you get a very close like two one hundred wide receiver or yard receiving game from two guys. And I think. The obvious choices are probably Amari and Jerry, but I'm going to go Jerry and David. Actually, I, I just think I just think that that the emphasis is going to be a lot on David this year um, because they're like, hey, we have a bunch of shifty wide receivers now, and he's always been he's always been open in the middle of the field. He's just always kind of in the past and in his rookie and early years, just drop the ball in the middle of the field. So hopefully he can open it up there, but. I'm going to go with uh, 35, uh, 24. Okay. Browns. So clean sweep for the Browns on the panel. Well, guess Not we'll see. Not going to come from the, from the – Four, 425 start on Sunday. Don't Not a fan. Not a fan. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I like more eyes all right. being on us. I it's like all, more eyes being on us. That's the best part is that it is like the national game for that slot. It's but, the best part. Great right weather for it. Could be the worst part too. Yeah. That, yeah. That's the biggest thing is like the national media right now. A lot of people shocker hating on the Browns and Brady on the call. Mm. But Ooh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Damn. Broadcasting Damn. debut. Yep. I think he loves Dak too. 
He's gonna. I, I, that's that's that's. Yeah, I'm tuned in just to hear him. Like right, okay, that's if if you're watching, that that's that's why they have that game. If you're just an average fan who's not a Browns or a Cowboys fan, you're tuning in for that game. That's why they have the national setup like that because you're like, all right, Tom Brady, ticket of you know, ticket paid for, price of entry. Mm-hmm. But interesting, Derek. Thank you for joining us. Yep. Discussion yep. amazing. <laughs> three three plus years in the in the in the running. Um, yeah. That's oh, all Derek. Hold on. Last thing. Last fun thing before we call this one quits. Derek. Hit us with an outro three. after Justin. You're good. But speaking of three. I have a top three pick and a fantasy draft of 10 tonight okay. with Jeff. Jeff's I'm fourth. It. I'm actually fourth. Oh, hey. All right. So I didn't realize that. So, um, <laughs> you're Derek, not going to explain start, this whole thing. Top four players that you would choose if you had the number one pick. They're all available. Yeah. So, Tyree Kill one. Ooh. Um, McCaffrey two. But I don't really. Feel we're that. we're also in a super flex league though, so we're playing two quarterbacks. Oh jeez, I hate. Yeah, <laughs> that. that screws with it a little. Because Just go with kinda, the original. Like, go with the original top. Go with your original okay. for right now. So, I would say Tyreek one. I would say CMC uh, two. I would say CD three. Mm. Which that crazy CD three. Um, four four is where it gets tough because. And I'll just tell you, I picked Jefferson Mm. in a couple of my, or no, one of my leagues, one of my leagues, but you have Sam Darnold and then I would say, all right, well, Jamar Chase, well, that's going on right now. Yeah. I, all those names I just mentioned, and I would say those two and then AJ Brown, AJ Brown would probably be the one that I would feel better about, but that's wild. That's high. I'm I'm gonna just say, and Jeff's gonna, you know, not that he's gonna be able to do anything about it. If at three Mahomes is there with everything that they've put around him now, I'm one thousand percent. I've been a Mahomes hater my entire life. This is gonna be the first year where I'm like, this is my guy. Really? As high? Because oh, I drafted high? him. Wait, Jeff, remember I drafted him last year and I traded him for Baker. <laughs> You got oh to in, in, in the in the super flex though, Derek. Uh, yeah, you have to because you play you two quarterbacks. To. Yeah. yeah, well, you, you get start two quarterbacks. It's wild. We'll send you our we'll send you our teams afterwards, Derek. Okay, All you can right. Right, you can you can tell us who's better. You you I have something clearly. for you though that Ooh. I wanted to bring up. Absolutely. Um, how happy are we? Fellas, that uh, we're going into the season with white face masks. Oh, as yes, the primary face mask. Thankfully, yeah. Dude. I mean, it's it's interesting. What's the midfield else? logo? Did they say brownie? It's the brownie again. Yeah, so that's the that's, good. that's fine. That's good. I'm I'm cool with that. It's interesting with everything that's going on around the Browns, the new name of the stadium. If the stadium yeah. is going to be the stadium for the Browns anymore in a few <laughs> years, you know, I I just like that. Like when we brought back the 75 jerseys, or when we made the 75 mm-hmm. jerseys, like we were putting those ideas out there, and when they. I think maybe when it was all the way back to hard knocks, like they showed the players the jerseys and everyone's like, oh, they got white jerseys and orange pants. But I was always of the thought that they had finally shown them, oh, we're going back to the all white face mask because I'll give you a little tidbit for me. I worked for the Browns in the equipment room in 2020. I think that was the season we went. What was that? I didn't know that? It was right before COVID. I had just gone back to, or I was just about to go back to Ohio State. And um, Brad, who is the equip, who was the equipment manager when I was there, um, he was a family friend and everything. So he like would have me in his office and talk to me and just show me things and whatnot. And so one day, me and his son were in there, and he's like, "Hey, look at this email I just got," and it showed us like the mockups. Mm-hmm. And there's like non-official, non-official, non-official. And it's the brown face mask. It's a white face mask and it's an orange face mask. Ew, and they orange. sent it to like the whole company and everything. Yeah. I, again, I think it was like one of those things where they were polling and it was just like, this is the most wild thing ever. Yeah. Like, what are they, what are they going to like actually put into an orange or a brown face mask? Like, it's just not. It just mm-hmm. doesn't make sense, but I, I've always been a fan of the white, so very happy about it. Orange jerseys, that's next. 
It's got to be. We'll see. I mean, we're not fans of the orange. Orange, really? Juices. Okay. They've just never been able to do it. You know, we've they orange is to make orange it is it tough. Good. Orange is tough color. They have to do it right. I think it can't honestly, be like fluorescent. No, you can't look like the Bengals and you can't look like the Bears. So like, it's just tough. that is a really good point. Who else has like brown pri- as a primary color? Yeah, and orange mixed into it. I mean, it's just tough. I would, I would love for it to happen, but like, I feel like it's almost like a you got to make it like an NBA thing where they do the city jerseys every year, and you would do it one game of those jerseys, and if you're happy with them, you keep them, like we did with the um, alternates from the color Jets rush. game. Yeah. yeah, the color rush. You know, when are we but, gonna wear our color rush again? They, I mean, are those out or I don't think they're wearing them this year. They announced the three games for the uh for the white ones. Yeah, I think they're out now. I think we're so. wearing them against the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well. And I mean, again, they move. Who knows? Maybe they do a whole different setup and whatnot. But everyone loves the you know old fashioned jerseys, so I don't know that those will ever change. Again, we'll they see. They shouldn't. We'll see. I mean. Just I think I think they're perfect as they are, the brown and the whites, but I think it'll look everything good. else afterwards. Yeah. All right, Justin, going to hit us with the outro? Yeah, absolutely. Derek, again, thank you for staying in with us. As always, we appreciate you coming on. Uh, everyone, thank you very much for watching uh, to the very end. If you guys have not already, make sure you are liking and subscribing, hitting the bell notification. Also, go make sure to subscribe, like, and follow Derek over at his page. Derek, it's still DF at Sports, right? Mm-hmm. DF Sports. So go follow him over there. Uh, he puts out a bunch of Browns content, a bunch of Ohio State content. So uh, always great analysis. I see his clips on there like we were talking about earlier. But, um, yeah, make sure you guys keep the notifications on, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Go